contagious. If you are really determined, you never ever quit. You never stop. You keep going. You keep going until there's nothing left and then you go further. I completely run out of money. You know, you get into things that you've never done before. Bert Littman was still running. You might have done business with these guys. They're, they're Takara Belmont, Mr. Beauty Equipment. I think his son Alan now has taken over, but at the time it was Bert. He was still the founder and president of, of the North America. And it was really cool. And he was married to a wonderful woman. to go there almost like a religion some people went to church I went to the beauty supply store where they sold the furniture and I would go there every two weeks every three weeks and I'd look around and I had my little pad and I'd take notes and I had my little measuring thing and I'd measure I didn't even have a salon but I knew one day that I would and they had in there a case of trophies of all the salon winners from modern salon of the year and I'd stare at that case. And that was eventually the case of my heroes and mentors. Those were the names I was watching, I was looking at, to see what they did to get in that case, what they did to have the best salon in the United States. I said, man, I have to have one of those. And she would watch me come in, and I didn't know they had cameras. I say, okay, I pick out some stuff, and they tell me the, start telling me the prices, and I start adding up 12 station salon, went to an eight station salon, which really went to a six station salon. Um, you know, six sinks went to three sinks, went to two sinks. Doing all this math in my head and readjusting my business plan and understanding how I can step it out. To make a long story short, she submitted my credit. It came back. No way. I didn't have bad credit, I just had no credit. So I needed a co-sign. I moved out of my house when I was 17 years old. Who's co-signing a $30,000 loan for me? My parents didn't have the power to co-sign that. I don't want to scratch on my head. What the heck am I gonna do? She co-signed it for me. The owner's wife said, we've never done this before. But you have such an unbelievable amount of passion that I know you're going to pay back this loan. And she put it through for me. That was the second amazing thing that happened. Here's another reason why. I was focused, I was driven, I was passionate. But I'll tell you something else I was. I was respectful. I had so much respect for the owners of this company. To this day, I, 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 I hold the dearest place in my heart for them. In 1997, we won Modern Salon of the Year Salon Special Award of Special Distinction, and our trophy is up in that cabin. And that was just an incredible, incredible achievement for us. Everything happens for a reason. But when you're committed, things start to unfold in a sequence that only the universe can put together. It didn't matter how much I wrote on my business plan, it didn't matter that I went to school. It didn't matter that I was surrounded by these business gurus and these business mentors. Not one single business mentor would ever tell you that if you were passionate and respectful that someone might be an angel and come down and co-sign your loan. Might take a chance on a young kid and allow that person to rent that space. Now, here's the cool thing. They knew that I had a plan. I carried my business plan around with me. And I showed everybody my business plan. And it was a real business plan. It had executive summaries, it had projections, it had a one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, 10 year projection. One stylist starting with me, how one stylist, me, could pay back the entire loan and be profitable. How two stylists made us more money, 
have five stylists, my plan to have six stylists, my plan to have 12 stylists, my plan to have two salons. Here's my point. It was so ingrained in me, it was so part of me. It was such, a, there was so much passion involved in it that it, that it, I couldn't stop. And I couldn't be stopped. If you're gonna really take this seriously, anything you do, it doesn't matter if you wanna be a salon owner, a spa owner, a musician, you wanna own a tattoo parlor, I don't care what it is. If it's unconventional, you're going to need help because people, business people, don't understand unconventional things. They're not trained to. They understand franchises. McDonald's, prove it. Burger King, it's proven. It. Pizza Hut, Subway, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks. These are big, giant corporations that do corporate breakdowns. This is what you need to understand. They don't understand you. And you need to help them understand you. And the easiest thing to understand is passion, focus, intention, being prepared. So I have my business plan, I got my lease, somebody co-signed for my, for my furniture. I ran out of money, bottom line. As soon as I got the furniture, they told me I needed all these things behind the walls called cats. I didn't know what a cat was, but that's how they hung the mirrors, they hung the stations. And so they assumed, you know, you were doing a build out. I wasn't doing a build out, there were walls. Why would I think that I needed to do anything? I thought I was ready to go. We had to tear all the walls down, put these things, threw me off budget, threw me to my timing off by four or five weeks, and I was working. Here's the thing, I did run out of money. And then what do you think I did? Well, after I was done having my little mini breakdown because all of my whole life was thrown into this, I picked up a book. Well, it is, it's a collection of stories about people who've overcome these amazing odds. What I am telling you is that his faith guided him and he broke it down. The building was, let's say, $2 million to build. He didn't have $2 million and he didn't know how to get $2 million from his congregation, but he said if one person donated $2 million, he'd be able to build a cathedral. So he went ahead and he had the plans drawn up. Ah, he carried around the plans. I carry around my business plans. Great people do what other great people do. Success leaves clues. You've heard that before. It's not new. You gotta live it.